Okay, this is part four of our basic Python programming tutorial for intermediate and new Blender users. I'm using version 2.63a. And this design you see here is very similar to the one we did in uh, part three, except in this case, I've uh, added a color to each of the cubes. And that's, uh, this is gonna be a short and sweet lesson. All right, so let's go back to the code. Control up arrow to get back to here. And let me see a few things I had done. Let me see, well, well, and a few things I'm gonna continue doing as I go is I'll just keep, just because every time I see it, since we didn't do it right from the first lesson, we're gonna do it now, is we're gonna call, say, define the main function. In here we'll say, define the design drawing function like this. I mean, it, I know it sounds, it might seem redundant right now, but trust me, down the road, when you come back and you're looking at thousands and thousands of lines of code, <laughs> it'll be all perfectly good. All right, and then down here, whoops, call the main function like this. Okay, so we're just adding little things as we go. So now, let me expand this a little bit so the code's not wrapped. So what I've done new in this case is everything's pretty much the same within our design drawing function here. Uh, we have our object, there's our cursor that we used in the first lesson, there's our radial distances defined, and then our basic variables. But now down here I have create a new material for the object. Okay. So what I've done is I've defined new color to be equal to bpy.data.materials.new and then I gave it a name called some color. I didn't, wasn't sure what I was gonna use at that point in time. And then I'm gonna actually define the color as new color is diffuse color is one, zero, one. So though we'll just put this here, the little comments. So that would be R, G, and B and then over here I'll put zero to one. So a uh, blender is using zero to one for the range of colors in a lot of programming languages you use zero to 255. So that would be zero is a little lesson here. In fact, um, is zero is all the way off. So you have say for instance, three digital analog converters that are lighting up the pixels on your display. One for red, one for green, one for blue. In the old days, they were the digital analog. Now it's just straight digital. But so if the number zero would be, that pixel for red would be all the way off. Zero for green, it'd be all the way off. And zero for blue, it'd be all the way off. And normally when you would turn it all the way on, you would use the number 255. That would turn, say if red was 255, that would be all the way on and green 255 would be all the way on. Well, if you had all of these turned on, red, green, and blue, that would give you the color white. If they were all turned off, it would give you the color zero. And for those of you who don't know, 255 represents one byte of data. All the bits within the byte, eight bits, all turned on, and that equals the decimal equivalent of 255. But in Blender, they just scale up between the numbers zero and one for all the way on and all the way off. So one is all the way on, zero is all the way off, one is all the way on. So my red component is all the way on, green is all the way off, and blue is all the way on. So basically I'm saying turn red and blue all the way on, and that's how I ended up with this magenta color. That's actually magenta. So we could actually change this code since we know the color is, in this case, magenta, like that. All right? And so yeah, if you wanted yellow, you know, really bright yellow, one red would be all the way on, green would be all the way on, zero would be all the way off, all right? So uh, I have a lot of other lessons on that. You can check out my math and technical lessons on hexadecimal binary, all that kind of stuff is, I have out there posted on my YouTube channel, First Grade Calculus. So let's continue down here. So what I had done, I defined a color name and then I defined the color value. So now within our main program here, we're running through just what I could do before. There's our outer loop. There's our inner loop. Um, there's our transformation of the size. Let's make the Z size a little bit bigger right now. Um, and then down here, since this is the cube that we're just adding to the scene, it is the active object. 
So now I say I've defined get active object, that's a name I made up, is equal to bpy.context.selectedObjects0. So basically the first object, which is happens to, that object happens to be the active object. And then I assign it the color new color. And new color is defined up here. So let's even make this let's just make this better. Let's just do it like this. Magenta color. Because really that's what it is when we're defining it for this particular color. And that helps keep this code cleaner. Because uh, later on you might look in the code and you go, well, what is new color? Well, you don't know. But now I know what it is. It's magenta color. All right? And then I just continue through the uh, routine like usual. So let's just move this back over here. I'll go into layer one only. I'd move that other light that was in here over to layer three. You clicked it, hit M button, moved it to three. All right, so now I'm gonna just highlight all those and delete them all. Put both layers back into the scene and we'll run this code and see if it actually does it. So it puts a bunch of block black cubes in there, but that's because there's no lights in the scene. And there they are like that. Now, just to verify if this is actually true, let us go see if we actually have a magenta color. So let's go back to the default window for a second and go over to the materials tab right here. And there it is, magenta. So we've named the color that you normally would type in by hand here. And there's the color indicated there for each one of the cubes in the scene. So then now you can make all kinds of colors to your cubes as you're adding to the scene, conditionally or not. We'll get into the if statements and the for loops and things like that in the next couple of lessons. And we'll just keep building as we go. And um, so that's it, short and sweet lesson. And I'll see you next time.